Ekelechi Amadi Obi himself, who is a lawyer, a Nigerian creative photographer, painter, artist, and an all-round creative. It's such an honor to have you here, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us today, Thank sir. You. Thank you. That was a very interesting one. What inspired the behind the scenes? We're talking about that office, so let's just talk about it. Yeah, well, basically, you know, um, a lot of people are curious as to how I create these images. And um, uh, a lot of times people think, oh, maybe we photoshopped, you know, a private jet in the middle of things. We did this, we did that. But when they look at the behind the scenes, it sort of uh, sometimes opens a new door into the understanding of how imagery has been, you know, made and then a lot of young photographers who are always curious about you know my lighting and things like that it's actually a tutorial for those who are a bit advanced so where do you seek um, inspiration from from what inspires your creative direction for it's, a it's life of you see um, my, my major goal with most of my work is to tell a different story of Africa uh, actually it is the real story of Africa it's a story of triumph you know individuals doing great things you know, people like Omotola, people like Nwankwo Kano, you know, just a lot of beautiful, uplifting, you know, material that would help inspire, you know, our people to go for greater things. You know, there's so much pessimism, you know, in, in our country. And it's when you complain about things, you're blinded to opportunities, you know. So for me, this, what inspires me is, can I tell a story that can uplift? You know, um, a lot of those pictures are fantasies. You know, I mean, Omotola doesn't own a private jet. But, you know, you could look at it, this could be. You understand? And then people look at it and then they aspire. Interesting. Very visionary. Yeah. And you're, I dare say, I, I like to call you my Leonard Senior. <laughs> <laughs> From a career in law, you have found yourself as one of Nigeria's most notable photographers. Where did the journey start for you? And I'm sure at the time you started, photography was not as lucrative as it is right now. Well, no. You know, um, the technology and the social media and internet completely blew photography out of proportion. Did you foresee you know? it too? No, I couldn't have foreseen this kind of world that we live in. I mean, uh, it is a beautiful time to be alive, actually. You know, um, when I started, you know, photography, I was just hooked on, on the medium. It was, it was the, the spontaneity of it, you know. I, I started from painting, actually, you know. And uh, painting is beautiful, but it's very introspective. But I, I like it, it, the, the, the outward nature, the, you know, the, the kind of, how do I put it? For a shoot, for instance, you're, you're working with a whole group of people, makeup artists, stylists, you know, the model, set builders, directors, you know, all sorts of, you know, and it starts to feel like an orchestra, you know? And you, as the photographer, you, you, you're, you're the choir master, you know, you're the, you're the guy that is, you know, commanding all that. And put all that cocktail together, it's so exciting to get an, an image out. Amazing. I heard something once. Someone said, it's not about the camera that you use, it's about the way in which you use it. How true is that statement? Oh, well, you know, um, a lot of times, in fact, I was at TechFest the, uh, the other time, and they were like, hey, how are you sure these machines will not take over your job? And I was telling them that, like, look, you know, I mean, in this time and age, everybody has a camera. Every phone has a, I don't know, I mean, 10, sometimes 12, 20 megapixel camera, good images that they bring out. But there is something that is unique about the artist's eye, is the emotional content. This is what you see and making a choice of the arrangement. You see, to be able to see these things takes a kind of interpreting right from your gut, your emotions, you know, and... The camera itself is just a tool. It will not get up, it will not move, you know. It's a combination of all the design elements, light, shape, color, you know. They come together to make, but most of all, is that emotional content of a story you want to tell and how you relate to the audience. Um, cameras are good, you know, but this is where the photograph is taken from. Interesting. Okay, now let's talk about... Um your work with younger photographers. Now you're like a mentor to a lot of younger photographers. Of all the, of all the people you've worked with as younger photographers, what would you say has been one of the things that you've noticed is a common mistake that modern day photographers make? Well, I think one of the first mistakes people make is to, they start complaining that people are not paying them. Um, so they are hoping for financial reward. 
long before they've attained proficiency at their craft. So when people go and say, oh man, they're not paying me well, people don't want to pay. No, if your work is good, they will be chasing you with their money, you know? So if you predicate your work on financial reward before you are proficient, then you lose steam. So what, the, what they should do is to, un, to, to, to love and enjoy the process. You know, find joy in the process itself. Then seek to fail big and learn, and fail again and learn, you know? And people say, you know, what is what doing is what doing badly until you can do it well. Brilliant. That's a twist. I've never yeah. heard that before. Brilliant. So what is what doing is what doing badly. Your first set of images are going to be terrible. I mean, when I go back and look at my first set of images, I'm like, what? So this is what people were paying for. I can't believe this. You understand? So uh, as you walk, but if you enjoy the process of the work, you find joy in the process of the work, you're already successful because you're living a good life. It's your life, you see? And, um, and then it's a matter of time. But then, whether they pay you or not, you're already happy with the work you're doing. So um, I would advise that they do that and put in the, the, the required amount of time before you attain mastery. And the other thing is try, try and focus. Focus on a, an area where you think you will be good mm. better than others. Concentrate on that area. And what would you say your focus area is? Oh, well, you know, I'm an image maker, you know, so I like to make art. Even if I'm, tell, if I'm shooting advertising, fashion, you know, portraiture, it's all about art. I'm, I'm so excited about visual impact. So that is me, you know, so I paint with light. It could be any story. Um, I particularly enjoy fashion even though fashion is not my main source of income, you know? Well, our fashion industry is great, but it's, it's not a big industry yet. Yeah. So our designers may not be able to afford to pay you certain figures, you yeah. understand? But, you know, I love fashion photography because of the opportunities it provides creatively. It provides this landscape where you're doing a commercial shoot, but at the same time, you have a leeway to tell a story you know, um, as an artist. You've mentioned that photographers should find a way to focus. Now, one of the challenges we often find amongst young photographers would be the fact that some of them want to do certain types of photography, but they don't seem lucrative at the moment. Yeah. Now, it, it seems that the most lucrative form of photography is wedding photography yes. because there's a wedding every weekend in Lagos, so yes. there would always be someone that wants to do. Yes. Now, what do you say to a young photographer who does not like, you know, um, wedding photography, but his own genre of photography doesn't bring him the money that he desires. Well, that is the thing, you know. I mean, maybe he's not good enough to be on top of his industry or be a major name in his industry. Um, that is why I said, you, before you start looking at being paid for your work, first of all, what you're offering is a service. You understand? You're offering a service or you're offering products. Now, you have to have something that people want to pay for. If your work looks like the next person down the road, if you're shooting weddings and your wedding photos look just like the next guy, why should they pay you more? You understand? You know? So what, what I keep advising people, it depending on what you want to do. Every genre of photographer, photography has an audience that could pay. You'll be surprised. You know, there are people who do um, you know, real life press photography that making a hell of money. You know, these days, you should not restrict your audience to Nigeria. It's gone global. You can yeah. be here, you'll be getting assignments from Reuters, you're getting assignments from CNN, from, um, you know, National Geographic, and they're, they're paying, I don't know, $10,000 a day and things like that. Look, but get your quality. Do, do not look at our quality here. Look mm -hmm. at global quality. There's only one quality. So if people at National Geographic, people at CNN, people at Time Magazine look at your work, Will they say, oh, wow, we need to call this guy? If, if, if people in Vogue, you call yourself a fashion photographer, your work, people in Vogue will look at your portfolio and they're not compelled to want to call you, then you need to look at your quality. You need to work a little harder. 
Yes, definitely. Yeah. Now, there's also something that we're seeing here that's been going on, and that is, I would say, the abuse of editing, right? Now, yes. when photographers edit photos, there are certain things that you focus on to make sure that the photo still looks natural, and it still looks very, very good. Yeah. Now, when the rest of us want to go on Instagram and <laughs> post a photo, and we throw on like 10,000 different filters, that is the abuse of editing. Yes. So what exactly do you, as a photographer, look out for when you're editing pictures? Well, I also look out for what it is I want to say. You understand, and um, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, when they put, you know, smoothen people's face so much, it looks like porcelain. You know, it looks like chinaware. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. I mean, it, it makes a nonsense of the whole idea of getting a sharp picture. You know, but you know the truth. You know, let's 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 uh, let's say it as it is. It's an art. You know, and uh, art is not restricted. You know, I mean, yeah, maybe for the story you want to tell, you want to wipe the person's skin off, but let it be deliberate. You understand? Yeah, I mean, I do have my style. I want to see it to look natural. I want you to, even after editing, people are looking at it. Was 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 anything done to this picture? You understand? And um, but I also advise people try and get as much as you can in camera. Don't depend on post production because well. You're a photographer after, a photographer after all. You see, I'm an artist myself. The first time I saw Adobe Photoshop, I was so excited. In fact, I was using it to make paintings instead of, I, didn't, I wasn't looking at the photo editing part of it. But after a while, there was a time I was so excited, you know, cut somebody up, do composite imaging and things like that. Then I found out I was spending a lot of time on Photoshop as opposed to shooting itself. So I had to ask myself the question because that's a full profession. Am I a, an image retoucher? And is that what I want to be? Or am I a photographer? So your picture should look strong, straight out of the camera. All right. Don't depend so much on, and hey, you know, if somebody has pimples and uh, you have all these things, well, you can take out a, a couple, but sometimes maybe we need to show those pimples, you know? Our scars, what after all, are what make us perfect. Yes, I mean, at, for instance, you want to tell the story of wisdom. At a 60-something year old or 70-something year old, at a certain age, they say you get the face you deserve. Your story is written on your wrinkles. You don't want to take those wrinkles off. Beautiful. Okay, now let's talk about you. You are a very well-achieved photographer in Nigeria, but we know it didn't come easy. So lead us into some of the times when you felt like you got it wrong and you needed to change career path, because I'm sure you must have had those moments, like the most difficult, the darkest moment of your career so far. Well, you know the truth. I mean, the, the darkest part of my career was actually when I was, you know, year one, year two in uh, university. Because then I, I, I was there studying law when all I wanted to do was to make art. You understand? And um, so I was conflicted, you see. I, um, I would try to imagine my future because they say you need to visualize it for it to come to life. I want to imagine my future as a Ghani Farami or Rotimi Williams in those days because those are the famous lawyers of their time. Well, I come from a family of lawyers. My father, too, was you know, a high court judge. But I, I just couldn't imagine myself you know, in that light. Um, a picture kept flashing in my head of, of me in a big studio you know, making work, and I thought that was insane. You know? So I kept fighting that image until my year three when I decided that, you know what? I'm going to be an artist, and that's what I'm going to be, period, you know? But I decided I was going to finish with school and uh, go to law school, get a degree, and got, get called to bar uh, before I then settled to full-time art. I was lucky because while I was in school, I kept practicing my art. That was when I realized the power of building a brand. That was when I knew that I would never suffer as a creative. So that, that was the darkest moment. And once I passed through that, it was smooth sailing for If me. you go back again, would you study yes. law? If yes. you had the opportunity to go back again? Yes, yes I would. I, to tell you the truth, there's something about law that is absolutely necessary for everybody. They say yeah. ignorance of the law is not an excuse. So what we're, you're learning are rules of engagement. Even right now, my knowledge of copyrights and intellectual property puts me in a good place, you know? I mean, when I used to paint, I would take, in fact, that's what brought me to photography, because I would learn the highest level of capturing my images, because how do I practice my copyright on my, on my paintings when I don't have high-resolution images? Absolutely. You know? 
And um, it was because of my knowledge of law and also taught me how to exploit you know, my talent. So law is something that we all need to learn. So I don't regret you know, um, studying law. You just regretted it at the time. <clears throat> I was conflicted. I needed, yeah. to, I needed to chart a path. And I once understand. I chart that path, it has, been, it has not been smooth sailing. You know, let me tell you. Sometimes you don't know when the next meal is going to come from. Sometimes, you know, you're totally broke. It happens to everybody. But then, if you understand the power you have, and that, you know, bad times have not come to stay, they've come to pass. You know, each time I find myself in those moments, I intensify my work, you know, and they just pass. Now, the creative arts industry in Nigeria is booming, nevertheless, and without a doubt. However, there is still the stigmatization, especially when young people want to go into the arts, and a lot of parents would prefer them to study something more academic, quote-unquote. Yeah. Now, how do we eradicate that stigmatization, and what challenges are we still seeing within the industry? Well, I think we, what we just need is infrastructure. You know, I mean, if you're dad is going down the road and oh, they say Kelechi Amadubi has given one girl assurance, you know, <laughs> with, uh, with the Ferrari. You understand? They'll say, oh, good, you know, you want to be a photographer? Awesome. You know, so I, I think um, to, to, to wipe away that, you know, stigma, it's actually on our, on our court to make sure that what we're doing is super successful to inspire uh, um, parents. To, I mean, parents are doing these things out of love. They want their children to be self-sufficient and uh, successful. <coughs> So they need a role model. They need somebody that is comfortable. You know, so the more we show how comfortable we are, the more parents will be comfortable to let their children follow our path. And you've also been a role model to lots of young people. So yes. thank you and well done with what you do. Thank you have a lot of young photographers that you've brought under your wing and even the older ones as well. The T.Y. Bellows that we also look up to also have, I know she, she, you and her have a very beautiful yes, we, friendship. We, we started together yes. actually. We were in depth of field together. You know? So, you know, it's an interesting history. Amazing. Yeah. It would actually be nice to have both of you side by side <laughs> 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 photography and friendship. Yes. That's a good one. Producer, take note. Photography and friendship. Tuai Velo and Kelechi Amadiobi. Thank you so much for coming on our show, sir. Thank you so much, sir. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.